You went to that job and been working there 20 or 30 years and they still not paid for what your value is. We all made investments. But there's only two sides of an investment. There's a good investment and there's a bad investment. Those that are good, they benefit your life and change your life for the better. But those bad investments leave a sour taste in your mouth. Now we see that boy, that baby, go on the other side of the store. Because that face reminds you of a bad investment. Yeah. When you see a car that was like the car that you bought and wind up being a limit, you don't like to see that car because it was a bad investment. Yeah. We've looked at financial investment. We've looked at a personal investment. But we also have spiritual investments. Because one day where you invest your time, talent, is going to show up in the judgment. And Christ is going to run our investment through the fire to see if it's going to come out on the other side. That's pure gold. I don't care how many good investments you had. I don't care how many personal friends you might have attained. What's going to happen when God tests your investment? The, the, the stock price for heaven is not on the NASDAQ. The stock price for heaven is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That Christ died and was raised from the grave, and thou shalt be saved. But we got to look at what we are investing in. Because a lot of us invest time, but not in the right places. I can ask you about a couple of Bible scriptures, and you might have to scratch your head, but if I ask you about a couple of reality shows, you can tell me the character, the place, the time, and where they were. We have to be careful. Where we're doing our investing. Here in the text we have in Galatians, we see Paul has written a letter to Galatia and he's, he's reading, he's getting ready to leave or getting ready to end the letter. And this is in the last chapter of the letter. And he says, Let it be taught. Uh, verse 6 says, Let him that is taught and the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. And then he goes on to say, Be not deceived. God. It's not mocked. Let me stay right there before I go into my investment scheme. Don't be so jumpy when the world throws you a curveball. This verse that said, be not to see God is not mocked. Whatever a man saw it, that should have y'all so weak. You're, you would be insane to go outside and pick a tomato and look for an onion. And we are in a culture now that wants to play evil and we good. And I'm here to tell you, it ain't going to happen. If you, if, if, if you so mess, you're not going to reap good times and high joys. You're going to reap mess. If you so dissension, you can't look for your house to stay together. You're going to reap some dissension. Whatever you put in the ground is not going to change once you put it in there. The only thing that seed is going to do is be cultivated water and one day you're going to see a sprout. And guess what? Sometimes it'll happen if you ain't even tending to it or not. You're talking to a country boy. They used to make passes and when they turn around they'll swing the track they call it a turn row. If you don't watch it, if you don't look on the turn row, you'll see more corn on the turn row than you see on the road that you're planting because if it goes in the ground and if it's cultivated and it's water, it's going to grow. And planting the seed is just an analogy for an investment. Because you will be a silly man to go out there and plant today and look for a crop tomorrow. That's why people are not good at investing because they don't get money to turn around today. Sometimes you gotta stick your money in there, you gotta see it rise, you gotta see it fall, you gotta see it rise, you gotta see it fall, you gotta see it rise, you gotta see it fall. Don't that sound like a relationship with God? Sometimes you're up, hey, sometimes you're down, but when you invest it, I let nothing separate me from the love of God because I'm investing and I'm expecting. I don't come up here to look pretty for y'all and wear my suit. I'm investing because he said, boy, if you teach the word, I'll walk with you, I'll talk with you, I'll rub your head when you're feeling down because I'm investing and I'm expecting. You won't see that baby to college for four years to put him not to get no degree. 
And some of them had to wait six, seven years before they got out of there. But no matter how long it took, you was at that dog on graduation, sitting there with your big old smile on, because you see the return of your investment. I, I was the one right there that told you A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I, I was the one right there that told you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I was there for the science project. I was there for the fan. Now my baby walking across the stage because I invested and I'm expected. Don't be worried about all these GOPs and Trumps and Republicans and Democrats. God rules the world and whatever, man. So that's who we all show shit on me. Ain't no need to get all bit out of shit by that person down the street that seems like they never go to church for doing everything the wrong way. My Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Sometimes the long way is the only way. Used to hear Caesar say, say, if we didn't have bad luck, we wouldn't have luck at all. Sometimes it's going to be rough. Sometimes you're going to have to fight. But if you put me in your investment, the sort of way to say your tears is just a relief. The pain, the sorrow, and the grief. But that's going to come a day we won't have to cry no more. And there's three questions you have to ask. When you talk about your investment, thank you, Jesus. There's three questions you have to ask when you talk about your investment. The first question you have to ask is, what are you investing? The first question is, what are you investing? The older I get, I realize my most valuable commodity is my time. For those of us that still go to the bar shop or the hair salon, you call, you pull up their page, and it has a three or four syllable uh, short thing for a word that say A P P T, which means appointment. And then they give you a list of times that are available. If I click three o'clock, when I walk in at 255, I'm looking for you to be dusting that man off, hitting him with some hairspray, and getting him on out my way. I give you to 310, because hey, some people are late. But when it starts ticking over to 315, 330, now I'm feeling like I made a bad investment. Because I paid an extra five to be here on time. But when I get ready to leave, you don't take that five off. And still looking for a tip. So now I'm out of more money than I'm supposed to be out of. Now I'm out of 30, 45 minutes that I had to spend somewhere else. What are you investing? I'm here to tell you, if you invest in your time, make sure it's worth your time. If you invest in your money, make sure it's worth your money. If you invest in your heart, Make sure it's worth your heart. Because some of us can testify we gave our heart to the wrong person and they tore that thing up. So guess what happened to be it? It was harder for you to invest it in somebody else. And some of us can testify we may, we may have let Mr. or Mrs. Wright walk by because my heart was broke. I'm here to testify, hey baby, it was just a bad investment. Life goes on. Everybody's not your enemy. Some people love you genuinely, but you have to watch yourself because you've already made a bad investment. And I was always told, don't put in more that you can let go away. Because I know some people who put it all on the line, who bid it all on sixes, and come home with a sad face. Because they invested more than they was okay with losing. While you out and you have these friendships and they put your time in on these jobs, make sure it's for a reason. Everything should have an end goal. And if they got an end goal, it might not be worth your time, your talent, or your time. What? Are you investing? Because it says in the first, if you 
if you if you sow in the flesh, flesh is what you go receive. So there's no way to look for a spiritual ending if it has a fleshly beginning. There's no way to be in search of a spiritual ending if it has a fleshly beginning. If it started out with adultery, don't think it's going to end with a white thing and fix it for kids. No! If you got the money roll, don't expect for it to stay long because if it has freshly started, it's not going to have a spiritual ending. What are you investing? Because as you can see, some investments linger for generations. Some stuff we do now will affect our grandkids. And now they have to learn how to deal with our bad investment. Kids will never know how to manage money because mama didn't know how to do it. Kids only know how to do these certain things to attain money because it's all mama and dad has shown them how to do it. What are you investing? These are questions that you may take along with you this week. First, with what are you investing? Secondly, how much are you investing? How much are you investing? Because if you're investing in something good, you have to invest a lot. But we all know when you invest in something bad, you can pretty much do that for free. The devil will send you a car. The devil will send you a partner in crime. The devil will send you a, whole, a hotel apartment that seems like it's ducked off in the back. He'll, he'll do that for free. The, 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 the saying is salvation is free, but the upkeep going to cost you. So how much are you investing? Because if you want to know what someone heart is, Follow the investment. Don't worry about it. If you if, 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 if he out there wash the car while it's raining, <laughs> they pretty much let you know where, where his investment is. When, when you hear hook up to the boat and drive past the church on Sunday morning, you pretty much know where his investment is. How much? Are you invested? Because if you don't try to match investment, let's look at what he invested. Born of the Virgin Mary, heal the sick, raise the dead, gave slight to the blind, let the lame walk, with the Lazarus, raised him up from the grave, and at the end, he put our cross on his back. Died of death, he didn't have to die, went in the grave, and rose early. Third the morning, now he's sitting on the right side of the Father, making intercession for us. How much are you invested? We miss around at the next floor and extra off what they need that money for. <laughs> we'll turn right around and go give six to seven dollars to the chili squad or give it to the basketball team or give it to the bank or whatever. But when it's time for God, it's too much. But how much are you invested in your spiritual life? Can you scroll the Bible as much as you scroll Facebook? This little book of here is going to be the death of a lot of people. Have you ever walked somewhere and seen somebody that never looked up, ran into everybody they seen? And we'll run over you. Don't say excuse me. They mad because you make them look up from their home. Maybe you walk in. How much are you investing? Because if you're investing your time in this thing, you've invested it in the wrong stuff. I just see somebody die and live in one text message. You better watch this thing. Because you'll mess around and realize you're spending eight, nine, ten hours on social media. And ain't read nothing that's going to help your life. But you know about Mike McNeil down the road. You know what's going to happen at the barbecue next weekend. And ask you about the Sunday school lesson. <laughs> and we take the Sunday school lesson now because it's right up up in the text you read and still won't click open to see what the Lord has to say. Oh. How much are you invested? My 
I'm not your half. Three questions you must ask about your investment. What are you investing? How much are you investing? And who is watching your investment? Who is watching your investment? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. That means God is watching your investment. Because if he knows to give you what you sold, that must mean he watched what you put in the ground. Yeah. You can lie to me, but you can't lie to God. No, Mac, I ain't say that to God in your ear. Yes, you did. Whatever man saw it, that so we all should so reap. That's why I like verse number nine. Be not weary. And well do it. For you will reap a harvest if you think not. And it, not, it, it didn't say a worldly harvest. You will reap things, life everlasting. Because of who watching your investment. I know you spoke a name, say that back with God watching your investment. I know you loan some money and they ain't have no attention paying you back with God. <laughs> Is watching your investment. I know you're praying for me. They're talking about you. I know you still spend money on you. You know they don't like you. God is watching your investment because he said that you were supposed to pray for those that despitefully use you, even though it's hard, just pray. And he said that if they step on one side, turn the other cheek. It's hard, but try. Because he had to turn his cheek. The Bible says while he was on his way to carry they slapped him. Yeah. And asked him to prophesy who hit him. Yeah. How mad can you be when you know the answer? Yeah. What would he say? He said, if Jeremiah hit with you, I know your mama, your daddy, you know. But they would show that he grew was, he said he was. And he was not here to make a name for himself. I'm only here to glorify the Father. And that's your greatest investment in every move you make and every song you take that you do it to the glory of God. Because I'm a living witness that days are not for sale. They're going by day after day. You'll get a text after text of somebody leaving out of here. And it might not show now, but Christ is going to put up his stock report. He's going to see how much you've invested in the kingdom and he's going to have two answers you be faithful over a few things. Come on up and I'll make you rule over me. We're going to say, depart from me. I know you're not because you didn't make no investments in the kingdom. Praise the Lord for your 401k. Praise the Lord for your retirement plan and your package. But don't make sure that's the only thing that looks tight on your stock sheet. Make sure you can look over there and say, I can't God the best that I could. My grandma always said, when I'm old age, she said, baby, I went when I could, so I don't feel bad when I can't. Yeah. And that's what God is looking for. Give it all you got while you can. Yeah. He know knees go out. He know hips go out. He know minds get bad. He know eyesight gets short, but if you get it, what you got when you can, I carry it when you can. Thank <laughs> you. 